Ça tourne pour moi. C'est OK. Hello, Tim. Bonjour. My favorite qualities in a man are uh, integrity. Because from integrity, many other virtues flow. It's like if uh, Shakespeare says in Hamlet, if, if you're true to yourself, you won't be false to any, to any man. My favorite occupation. Well, the first um, answer that springs to mind is being a gunfighter in a Sergio Leone Western, but that doesn't really exist, unfortunately. So uh, I think being a doctor is a wonderful and noble occupation, I, I must say. I don't practice medicine myself anymore, but I very much admire people who do. It's one of the few uh, endeavors in life where that quality of integrity remains very central and in the great majority of cases, still uh, practiced. There's still a lot of integrity in medicine. So. My idea of happiness is being in the middle of a particularly uh, thrilling and a bloodstained chapter of one of my books when the writing is going well. I'm very happy when I'm on a good roll with the writing. Once I started writing, <clears throat> I don't really think too much about themes. I just follow the the impulses of the, of, of the characters. But I think it's in, <clears throat> inevitable that a writer's uh, preoccupations or obsessions arise uh, time and again in, 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 in his or her work. It, 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 it's true for most writers. You know, I'm not comparing myself, I, by the way, but you know, in, in, in Shakespeare and Dickens and so forth, they return to the same deep inner themes time after time, even though the outer shape of the story is completely different. If I wasn't myself, who would I be? Well, again, uh, <clears throat> Sergio Leone movies pop to mind. <laughs> Charles Bronson in Once Upon a Time in the West. But, um, I don't know, maybe Julius Caesar would do. I think the struggle for, for power in, in, in its many different forms is the main motivation for all war, really. There's always some ideology or other that you can mobilize, or, and, and indeed usually have to mobilize in order to create war, whether it's religious or political, tribal. <laughs> there's hundreds of different reasons. You know. there's, there's a war in British history called the War of Jenkins' Ear, you know, because some British sea captain got his ear cut off, and so it's like uh, so they, they, had, they had like a you know a seven a seven years' war or something. I have a friend who's a Canadian friend who's in the Peace Corps and did uh, various dangerous places. And a few years ago, I asked him about the war in Afghanistan because I, I just couldn't understand on any rational level why we were fighting this insane war in Afghanistan. And he said, well, you just have to follow the money, as always. And there's always more sordid motives for a war than the reasons that they give us. It's like the wars for democracy. We know we're destroying all these countries to bring them the, the great fruits of democracy. Democracy has become a religion in that sense, in that political sense. What do I hate the most? I guess I hate the, uh, the, the, the relentless... Um, hypocrisy of modern neoliberal capitalism the most, if that doesn't sound horribly pretentious. But so many other evils stem from that in our lives. I was brought up uh, as a Catholic uh, in England, which is a predominantly Protestant country. I'd, and I, of course, had lots of friends through my life who were brought up in uh, the uh, Protestant church. And I didn't know what the difference was. So you'd ask a Protestant, well, what's the difference between your version of Christianity and our 
so to speak, version of Christianity. Hardly anyone knows the answer to that. And in researching this book, boy, it, 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 it's a real intellectual challenge to, to, to really understand what the theological differences are between, it, it's like the DNA thing, it's like 99.9% .9 the same. And they're fighting over this wafer thin and really arcane philosophical differences in, in, in belief, which almost no one amongst the people who are actually doing the killing understood. Your average Protestant warlord had no idea. He said, sit down and tell me the difference. Or, or Catholic, they wouldn't have had a clue to tell you the difference between the two ideologies. And uh, as I said, I think it's much the same. Now we'll destroy. When I was writing the religion, the Iraq, the Iraq war was uh, raging. And I was writing it thinking, and looking at the TV thinking, wow, it's just the same stuff all over again. When I was writing 12 Children, we were in the process of destroying Libya. <clears throat> and definitely not for the reasons they told us. We can't believe anything these people tell us. Uh, it's, it's true. My favourite painters, Caravaggio. We've just seen the exhibition, but that was true before then. I also like Bruegel, the Bruegel, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Triumph of Death and all those amazing paintings. And I like Mark Rothko, modern painter. I'm one of the little people. I'm, I'm a person of no importance or power. And uh, you're right, a lot of these stories are about we, the, uh, <laughs> the little people, struggling to survive in the chaos that's been created by the big people. Mm the big, clever uh, people to whom we give so much power over our lives. My characters try to seize back some control over their lives. And I mean, as I said, there's no, in I have no political thesis to advance in my uh, novels, but I do w wonder how and when we, the people, will start to seize some control back o over our own lives. In our my favourite poet, um, hmm, that's a difficult one, William Blake, yeah, yeah, William Blake. Yeah, I think all my stories are, and in hope certainly, yeah, they're not, they, they don't, they're not like nihilistic stories, there's a lot of darkness in them because there seems to be a lot of darkness in the human world, uh, but they always end in a, with a hope of, of one kind or another. I think most of my stories are about a confrontation between little people who, are, who find very powerful emotional connections between each other, who have to defend that love, those connections against these uh, d d destructive forces of power. and. I guess on a metaphorical level, that's what I think we, as people, need need to do in our lives. We need to make these connections across all these artificial boundaries that our cultures create between us, and you know, look after each other a bit more, and find some common cause to. Uh, it sounds terribly cliche, but to make the world a better place, because it, 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 certainly at the moment it's not. The world is not a very good place, even in our rich and comfortable societies. And um, it ends relatively happily for one of my stories, because um, I guess because I believe or hope that in the end humanity has can rise above blind hatred to find some. Uh, some love or something positive. I mean, I think the ending is kind of like two pluses and a minus in terms of positivity, whereas most of my stories are more like one plus and two minuses. Um, and it wasn't a cynical happy ending, if, 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 that, if that's what you want to call it. But, but now that you mention it, uh, 
it's hard enough to get, <laughs> to get a book published with any kind of ending at all. And if it had ended in complete nihilism, um, I doubt anyone would want to read it. Huh? I am not a nihilist, huh? a nihilist. Huh? It reminds me of that, uh, do you know the movie, uh, The Big Lebowski? Mm -hmm. There's a great scene towards the end where the, the John Goodman character says to Steve Buscemi, don't go near them, Donny. They're nihilists. <laughs> the other guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I really need to translate that.